Hello crypto friends, checking in on things. We're only gonna look at a couple altcoins here today. We're gonna focus more in depth on a trade review. I'm gonna go through my thought process and all the different ways that we can set up a trade and how it differs for every individual based on whether they wanna be aggressive or conservative. So checking in on Bitcoin, the pullback is definitely more than the bulls would like to see in an ideal world on the daily time frame. We are still in a daily uptrend and we do still have a lot of space above our last daily higher low at 30,000, 30.1 thousand. So we are scouting a daily higher low as the most likely scenario within the next couple of days. From there, the question is, can the bulls see continuation for this weekly bounce to continue playing out by getting over the 36.6 thousand high or is the pullback too significant? We set a lower high compared to that level and confirm a downtrend. If that were to happen, that would be a red flag for the potential that this is just another mini bear flag that could lead to another leg down. And obviously, if we get a bull break over 36.6, then the bulls have a lot of space above the recent low and some continued confidence to try and set the monthly higher low. Our monthly candle formed. We're grinding the EMA 12. Again, we have all these growth names to look back at historically that have similar setups. And the question is, can the bulls shift momentum? Currently, we got a monthly inside bar, 29 days to go. That's a very long time and still grinding this monthly EMA 12. So scouting a daily higher low, shorter term time frames. We just had an hourly falling wedge break bull. This is going to be part of the trade review that I talk about. I just wonder why trading view will just randomly change things. I've had a solid line for weeks. Just gives me a dotted line one day. So there's our bull break of the hourly falling wedge. And now the question is, can the bulls get over four hour EMA 12 resistance and our last four hour lower high of 34,000? So that's where the next battle is set to be had. If we can't break 34,000, then the bears keep their midterm control and there won't be a daily high or low if we keep setting four hour lower highs. Today is shaping up for the potential of an inside bar double bottom by a dollar, six hours until the candle closes. If the inside bar forms and breaks bullish, our new daily higher low is set. Dominance chart, still in a little bit of a daily downtrend, weekly perspective, inside bar. So this weekly is likely to close as an inside bar. And again, if we pull back and lose the pattern of a higher low every week, our weekly equilibrium will then be playing out and we'll scout a higher low compared to 41.21. Keeping in mind that the bulls want to see this chart continue to drop because in the last six plus months, we'll just say all of 2021, the biggest bull moves, the most convincing bull moves have been led by the alts. And it happened yet again on this daily trend change. When the bulls showed up, it was the alts leading the way. And even this morning on the hourly bull break here, this bull move was happening from 8 a.m. to essentially 11 a.m. Eastern. And look what the dominance chart was doing at that point in time a solid drop. It was alts leading the way up on that falling wedge bull break. ETH USD, lots more space for the daily higher low. And if you look at retracement sizes, this is a much more healthy period of consolidation than what Bitcoin is currently seeing. Anything above 1717 is a daily higher low. And if the bulls can set the daily higher low, a bull break of 2288 would keep the uptrend going and would keep this weekly bounce going because we broke the high of last week with zero follow through at this point, bulls definitely need another higher low and higher high. So hourly time frame, things got tight. I'm sure you could draw a falling wedge here as well. Broke bull. And now we zoom out to the four hour time frame. And we're looking at four hour resistance, 2140. There's a lot of resistance there. Looking at the hourly chart, 2146, 2140, and here we just topped out at 2130. And now we're trading sideways. Bulls looking for a bull cross of the EMAs. An hourly bull flag would be ideal next time we consolidate. Bottom line is bulls have to prove it by getting over four hour resistance, same as Bitcoin. And we got the ETH BTC chart trying to form a daily bull flag. Four hour perspective, nice move off the lows. Again, it was this bull move taking place when the falling wedge broke bull on Bitcoin and trying to confirm a daily trend change to keep this weekly higher low going and get us back into the midway range 
of this weekly equilibrium. ADA USDT getting a little bit of attention here. The bull break on the daily had zero follow through, but it's a bull flag with very clear support. We've got a double bottom down at 128 and we've got some news as the reason as to why Cardano here is shaping up as a lead bull today. And it's Grayscale adding Cardano to its digital large cap fund. So that's helped with some headlines. And look at this ADA BTC chart. It's a really nice inverse head and shoulders setup. We've been keeping an eye on this one for the last three or four days. Resistance, 41.30. We topped out at 41.27. So this is the bulls attempting to confirm a daily trend change, which hasn't happened yet, but that's what they're attempting to do. And that would give us our weekly higher low off EMA 12 support. And we would then watch for a weekly lower high compared to 48.95. So on the verge of a daily trend change and the bulls of course want to see the US dollar pairing and the BTC pairing both confirm daily trend changes together. With where it's positioned right now, ADA is positioned really well if Bitcoin gives us a daily higher low from here. ADA would likely see a bull break long before Bitcoin sees a bull break. So, that's where we stand in the short term. Daily and sidebar potentially on watch for Bitcoin for our key resistances for the bulls to get over for the daily higher lows to be shaping up. So I was looking for a trade in ETH USD yesterday. And the setup I was looking for was a falling wedge, but I was a bit too early because I was using a falling wedge resistance level that was tighter than the one that ended up shaping up. And I guess it actually played right off of it. Now I was looking I was looking over here. So this is where I was entering the trade. This is where the trade setup was on July 1st yesterday. So was watching this to be a falling wedge. The bear breaks were not getting much follow through. We were building a base of support here. And as we were building this base of support, I was choosing ETH USD as the trade that I was going to take. In ETH BTC, I was looking for a four hour higher low off of EMA 12 support to align with my entry. So at that point in time, Bitcoin is grinding here, a base of support. I'm looking at 10, 11, 12 a.m. And looking at ETH USD at 10, 11, 12 a.m., we're grinding down and building a base at 2072. So I made an initial starter entry at 2082 or something along those lines. And I would have entered two more positions if we continue dropping and if Bitcoin's hourly RSI dropped down into oversold. Why am I looking bullish? Bigger picture, I'm scouting a daily higher low. A daily higher low is the most likely scenario on Bitcoin in the short term over the next couple of days, in my opinion. So I'm knowing that that is my most likely scenario and I'm using the shorter term patterns to try and position myself for the potential of a daily higher low being set. So this is where answering the question to yourself, do you wanna be aggressive or conservative is how you shape up the trade. If you answer, I wanna be a conservative bull, you have no interest in this trade because a falling wedge is making entries on breaks of support with lack of follow through. And your stop levels are based on dollar risk because I'm not playing based off support because by definition, support breaks with falling wedges. So I chose to be an aggressive bull making this entry. And honestly, the reason was just, I like falling wedges. I have a really high win rate with falling wedges in both stocks and crypto. And I can't remember the last red trade I've had in crypto. So that allows me to be a little bit more aggressive and comfortable for that reason. So I established the position and I then entered a second position once Bitcoin broke and saw a little V-shaped bounce because that tells me this looks like a falling wedge. It it's, has the characteristics, breaking support straight into a bounce. So on that support break, ETH did not break support. We formed a triple bottom. I said, okay, second entry in ETH 2085. So I got an average with fees, we'll call it 2085 average. And I then left one more position if we see another clear break with a lack of follow through. But then once the bounce started getting going, that then shifted my mindset. As soon as the bounce starts playing out and as soon as we break this downtrending resistance line, I say, okay, the falling wedge is attempting to play out. I'm no longer looking for any more additional entries. And now it's all about taking profit because as soon as this pattern breaks 
I zoom out and I say, okay, what are we looking for now? Four hour time frame, EMA 12 resistance test. And we know we're just looking for a four hour lower high. So I have to protect against a four hour bear flag. The falling wedge and the reason for my entry, aside from the bigger picture of looking for a daily higher low to form, is out of the picture now. It played out as far as I was concerned at that point in time. So now the question is scaling out partial positions to remain protective. If you are conservative in your protection, you're going to enter, you're going to exit half of your position into this bull move. We had an hourly bull break on ETH and to ensure follow through, the bulls needed to break all of these hourly levels. We had resistance at 2130, 2139, 2146. And you can see we only took out two of those levels and failed to break 2146. So conservative would exit half of their position. Let's just say I chose conservative. In at 21 at 2085, out half at 2120, we'll say. And that would lead to a break-even of essentially 2150 or 2050, I should say. And that puts you in the driver's seat, extremely comfortable. You can put your stop under the low. If it's a four-hour bear flag, you get stopped out risk-free. Break-even trade, no biggie. And as you know, I love break-even trades for positioning. I chose to be a little bit more aggressive. Again, being in a scenario where the only thing I'm risking here is profits from my last trades, and this would be the profit from the aggressive Bitcoin trade that I entered back here. This was the last trade that I took in crypto and scaled out, and that went well. So I decided to only exit 20% of my position. So I exited 20% at 2120 and dropped my break even down a little bit, maybe down to 2078, 2079. And then sleep became a factor. And there's so many, what I'm showing in this trade review is there's so many factors. You know, when someone asks me, is this a good entry? This is what's going through my head. All of these little tiny pieces of the puzzle and so much of that information, I just don't know. You know, it's not just about key levels. It's about, are you scaling in? How aggressive are you going to be scaling out? Are you going to be protective? Where's your stop loss going to go? Are you at the computer all day today? So for me, as soon as this rejection took place, there was a red flag on the BTC, ETH BTC chart. If it was going to be an ideal trade, and if we were going to get follow through, and if I was going to be right on this trade, we would have set a four hour higher low and made our way back to resistance. We set the four hour higher low, saw zero follow through and broke support. Red flag. And of course, the other red flag is not breaking 2146. So I decided to let this trade play out a little bit and I had to go to bed and I couldn't watch things. So I said, all right, well, I just have to put my stop under the low with a little bit of wiggle room under 2070 and ended up overnight stopping out and ended up with a small loss. And it was good risk management in the sense that I exited 20% to drop my break even a little bit, but also just the fact that it was such a small loss. I honestly don't even know the size of the loss. It's small enough that I'm not even factoring it. I'm not even figuring it out because it's less than a day loser with where I exited. That being said, if I were awake and at the computer, I would not have stopped myself out because Bitcoin didn't break support. Bitcoin held support on that drop and formed a double bottom and then bounced. And at that point in time, ETH USD had some nice oversold conditions on the 15 minute, five minute time frame. So if I'm sitting at the computer, I am managing this trade and doing some short term flips on the way down. If Bitcoin had broken support as well, I would definitely want to stop out. But Bitcoin holding support would have had me flipping around these little two to 3% bounces to just continuously lower my cost basis. But again, because this happened overnight, had to have that stop level set and stopped out with a small loss, even though I would be in the green right now if I were able to have let it play out. In the end, it ended up being an hourly falling wedge, just different than the one that I had. So the one that I had, again, was too tight. I was using this as my falling wedge, when in reality, it was this. And you can see the increase in bull volume on the break of this resistance. So just little, little tweaks make the difference between a green or a red trade. And I don't have any regrets about this trade. I liked my entries, that went well. 
You know, if I did anything different, it would just be exiting half of my position because instead of having a small loss, I would have had a break-even trade. But I don't regret going a little bit more aggressive. And in the end, I do believe that we're going to set daily higher lows here over the weekend. So I'm not going to be looking to enter any more trades because what that does now, now that I've got a red trade, is I dial back from aggressive to a little bit more conservative because the last thing I want to do is start stacking up a couple losses in a row and get on a losing streak. And I also still have exposure long. I've still got my Bitcoin and Ethereum positions attempting four monthly higher lows from the 30,000 flush and I'm letting those play out. So I've got my long-term no touch exposure. I've got my swing trade exposure. And this was just trying to get day trade or you know one day overnight trade exposure. So back to conservative. So some small tweaks as far as exiting. You know, I could have seen the rejection on ETH from 2140. And then as soon as we lost this little hourly bull flag attempt, I could have exited another chunk of that position but at that point, I was off the computer. So all these things are factors. And again, individually, think of how different the situation varies for you, whether you're conservative or aggressive, whether you're on a winning streak of trades or a losing streak of trades, whether you are looking bullish or bearish, whether you are at the computer all day or you've got a full-time job and a family that's going to be keeping you distracted over the next 12 hours. These are all little tiny questions you have to answer for yourself as you are establishing a trade game plan and trying to set up appropriate risk and reward on that trade game plan. So from here, I am still bullish to scout these daily higher lows. And if you haven't made a trade attempt, like I have, you know, if I wasn't, it's essentially I'm putting myself in timeout. Like, okay, don't get a losing streak going. If I had not had that losing trade, I would have been all over playing this hourly falling wedge this morning. And it would have been a little bit more clear. So I was just half a day too early. So that is my trade example. In the end, it is a completely uneventful trade. But those are all the tiny little turning wheels as far as what determines an established trade game plan and whether it's a good one or not. And the, the key first aspect is the scaffolding of the trade, the longer term time frame. I wouldn't be looking for an hourly falling wedge to try and break bull if I was looking for a daily lower high to be set. But I'm looking for a daily higher low to be set. So that's why I'm scouting four hour and hourly time frames for signs that the bulls are setting those daily higher lows. Feel free to ask any questions. Do good things. Have a great weekend. We got a holiday weekend here. Maybe I'll put out a crypto video Monday, even though the stock market's closed. See you soon. Thank mm-hmm. you.